August, did we not have a great time oh in Cologne so this fun. weekend? It was just phenomenal. We we walked miles. This I'm meeting so is so tired. big. I am so tired. You can do it. You can do it for one last video. This guy's been a rock star. You've seen some of our videos already, and uh, we thank you for watching those things. Uh, what do you think the biggest highlight of the IDS for us was? Well, obviously it was 3D printing. It's really interesting when you look at dentistry. We go through these little trends. Like, do you remember, like when I, you and I graduated from dental school about the same time. Right. It was chair side bleaching. And then it was <laughs> with, the, with the light yeah, and everything like that. Yeah, it was rotary endo. Then it was Invisalign, and then it was Lumineers, right. and then implants, and then guided surgery. The biggest thing right now is 3D printing. And I think that a lot of people are fascinated mm -hmm. by it, and as people that mill crowns with our Cirrhic machines, we're, we're fascinated by making things. You're and right. 3D printing is big worldwide in other industries. So uh, seeing it come into dentistry, um, is really cool. Yeah, absolutely. As Cirrhic owners, I think we've we've taken it for granted that we skip a step. Yeah. We've been able to skip a step, and we don't even think about it, but that, that one step of being able to have that model mm -hmm. is, is huge. Whereas you know with surgical guides, and even down to the dentist that just wants to replace alginate in his office, yeah. you know, for study models or bleach trays. I mean, printing is really getting there. And we saw some amazing printers uh, the last few days. We that, have. That's very accurate, uh, the speed, and then the materials for which they're printed out of matters a lot. What, tell yeah. me about those. Yeah, you know, actually, if we, if we could take a step back. So, um, mm -hmm. Serena released STL and the ability to export a model. And I think a lot of people have been thinking, well, you know, what's the big deal about the model? Yeah. There's so many things you can do with this model. So if you've been doing any sort of aligner therapy in your office, um, you've been paying $1,800 or $1,000 for uh, these aligners. You can make them in your office. And as Todd said too, just doing away with any sort of impression. So we've had this little Cirrhic world, yep. skipping a step and making a model. Now we have the ability to just do away with any impression yeah. at all. And talking with the folks from Serona, um, we are now open. So there's other possibilities. Hang on, you gotta wait. Companies. We have our pizza delivered. No, this oh, is the perfect okay. timing. So just, so, hey, just we. Yeah, pizza. we've had a great yeah. day. Here, come here, come here, buddy, come here. This is, this is one of our great waiters. Uh, he's uh, he's serviced us <laughs> great for the last few years. He's given Thank us balloons, yeah. balloons for ev every time that we've uh, gotten anything they here. Love, and they, our they love us. Beer. They it's heart us in Germany. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Thank you. You're only limited by your imagination. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, we saw so many things of what these uh, these different companies are dealing with or trying to figure out a way to use printing, like gingival masks. You know, they have a different material just for that or for the models or for placing brackets for yeah. ortho. You know, I mean, it's an amazing time. There, there's a lot of interesting things. And, and Todd, we looked at the different types of printers out in the market. And although in the world of 3D printing, there's three, so there's FDM, which is a hot glue gun, and then there's these um, vat of, of composite that's, that's light cured. So we have SLA or DLP. And I think that we saw on the floor that DLP is being um, sort of the main yeah. uh, technology coming out of this. And we're seeing the prices come down to really affordable levels. That's right. And so we we did videos not only from the United States, but from Korea, Italy, mm -hmm. uh, Spain, Spain, China. And, you know, basically the technology is very similar, mm -hmm. but the prices fluctuate greatly. And, yeah. I, and I think we're at the point right now where prices are probably fluttering you know mm -hmm. some are a lot more expensive than they should be and some are cheaper than they should be sure. so we're kind of trying to figure that out but i you know what i bet anything in the next 10 months let's say the next year mm -hmm. 2018 right now at the end of march those prices are going to be solidified you're going to know exactly what you get for a dlp printer you're going to know exactly what you get with an SLA laser printer and then the materials that go with those things. You know, we met with some companies that um, uh, talked a lot about materials, but they were kind of floundering on, you know, what it can do for, like, I, I yeah. mean, temporary crowns. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna print a temporary no. crown. Yeah. But that was, a, that was the starting point for one company. 
What did you see in, as far as printing materials that you think I, is the best? I think that you're going to see two dominant materials. One is model printing. Uh -huh. So um, uh, previous uh, 3D printing models, they've been uh, infatuated with being very shiny. And so these shiny matte, models. Yeah, these matte materials are coming out, show a lot more detail. And what we've been finding with the different companies is there's um, more detail can be read out of a different material than the other and different speeds can be. Yeah. So let's do this, Todd. So over the next few months, uh, Digital Enamel, we're gonna test out different printers, right. different materials. We're gonna figure this stuff out for you because right now the, the market is so up in the air, we don't want you to waste your money. Yeah, So absolutely. We're, we're gonna be buying printers from Korea. We're gonna be buying <laughs> printers from all sorts of different countries and testing them out and testing out different resins and figuring out the lowest cost, highest quality way for you to get into 3D printing. Yeah, and, and August made a good uh, a point to me over the weekend because I'm not nearly as uh, versed on printing. Just the graphic user interface, yes. the GUI of the software you can take for granted. And, you know, coming from the Seric world, we, how did you describe it to me about going to the mill preview? Yeah. So it's interesting. So when, remember in the 3D printing world, we're not talking about the world of dentistry. Right. It, it's just a very open source format. So these computer geeks are very used to jumping through a bunch of hoops to get a product. Um, the, the, their version of the parameters, yeah. all the different settings. And you told me that if yeah. you forget one little thing, it'll screw it all it, up. It'll mess it all up. And the problem too is we're used to in CIREC getting restoration in seven to 10 minutes. And if we mess something up, it's only another you seven or 10 yeah. minutes. But when it comes to the world of 3D printing, it may, you might be four to eight hours into a print and realize something is wrong. So the, I think that where things are gonna fall out are printers that have that graphic user interface that's easy to use, right. that has easy printing softwares where doctors can plug and play. Right. And right now, there's some dominant players that are doing that, and then there's some fringe players that could be molded to do that, right. um, that are much lower in cost. So I think my goal, and I think our goal is digital enamel, is we're gonna sift through all that That's and right. figure out what, what the best players are in the next year. Yeah, and uh, uh, you know, you did all the interviews for everything. I was kind of behind the camera, so I'm kind of learning on the fly as you're mm -hmm. interviewing these people, and I saw a lot of that. I saw a lot of really good equipment mm -hmm. that could, uh, had the high resolution, everything, the price points were right, but their software was lacking. Yeah. And then we saw the other companies that had great software and then their printing materials may be lacking yeah. or something like that. So right now in the in the world of printing as sexy as it is right yeah. now, it's pretty confusing. It's really confusing and I think that we as CIREC users have been uh, spoiled. That's right. So that we have like a nice workflow so that I've got three chairs going, I'm not gonna sit there and go, gosh, uh, let me type in the uh, IP address of my printer <laughs> to make sure that this talks to this. We don't wanna so do any of that. We need to make sure that we um, find the best printer that's easiest to print, that's the best graphic user right. interface, and that can give us prints in a great time. That's another thing we looked at was print times. Right. So we're, you know, we get antsy if something mills in a half an hour. So imagine mill or printing something in three to four hours. So the DLP printers are looking like they're coming out in sub 45 minute prints, which yeah. I think is definitely acceptable. And you and you think that the DLP printing is the way it's going? I not it not is. not solidified, but I, that's the way it's going. I mean, um, I love Form Labs. I love my Form Two printer. It's really slow, and so DLP. And that's a. What kind of printing that, is that? That is, so So within the, what they call stereolithography, there's two technologies. So there's SLA laser and SLA DLP. So SLA laser is a single laser beam that cures pixels within uh -huh. a vat of composite. DLP will cure an entire layer at a time. So I think DLP is going to emerge as the is technology the to, to watch out. And we're seeing those price points come out. Um, we saw the Envision Tech printer, which I think, I honestly think that they have the technology and the backing to be the dominant player in this realm. 
but I just bought a $550 <laughs> Chinese DLP printer. So they I, claimed and they claimed higher resolution. Higher resolution. So I want to test know. this out. I'm not going to recommend it until I've tested yeah. it out. But that sounds really, really that, cool. That's amazing. Regardless yeah. of what you end up recommending and what we end up like going with, uh -huh. uh, it is now. I mean, we got to we got to be in that because you know physical impressions, stone models. We need to get rid of this stuff. I mean, yeah. And quite frankly more fun it's just, yeah it's just it, cooler it is to do really fun to do and oh my god you show your patients this stuff they are yeah. crazy about you so the same enthusiasm they had with CIRAC it's tenfold with 3d printing they see this thing emerging from a vat and they were geeking out you know actually you just saying that it makes me think you know every time we're milling something out for a patient with CIRAC mm -hmm. they always say Oh, it's a printer. It's You're 3D printing. Print. They, know, yeah. they know printing. They don't yeah. know milling. They don't know. So right. milling, we're doing the negative, but they already know the printing of it. Mm -hmm. And now we can actually be a part of that in a, in a much more efficient world. Yeah. So August, man, we've had just a tremendous It's been fun. Week. It's been yeah. awesome. It, it's been a great, great meeting. Yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed our videos. We've got a lot more coming down the pipe. I mean... When you're looking at uh, 3D printing, I'll tell you what, this guy is the guru.